Hello everyone, welcome back. Here is Van Amsen with another live coding uh, challenge. So uh, today we have a very interesting uh, task to tackle uh, 1458 max dot product of two uh, subsequence. So, uh, all right, let's understand the problem first. So given two integer array, uh, num1 and num2, we need to return the maximum dot product between not empty uh, subsequence of num1 and num2 uh, and with the uh, same length. So it's essential to remember that a subsequence of an array can be obtained by removing zero or more elements uh, from it without changing the order of the remaining elements. So let's uh, look at some example. So imagine we have uh, something like this. So it will be num1. So yeah, num1, uh, 3 minus 2. And our, our num2 uh, will be 2 uh, minus 6 and 7. And the best dot product we can uh, get is by taking uh, 3 from uh, num1 and 7 from uh, num2 which give us a total of a product of 21. So this is our output. So pretty straightforward, right? But uh, as the array grows larger, this problem becomes more challenging. And uh, that's where our algorithm uh, come in. So uh, let's uh, break down the logic. So the first thing that might come uh, to mind is to try all combination, but that would be highly inefficient. And instead, we will use dynamic programming. And the main idea is to keep track of the maximum dot product we can get for every pair of indices, i and j, where i is from num1 and j is from num2. And as we iterate through our array, we will update our solution based on uh, previous results. So, uh, Okay, let's roll up uh, and uh, start coding. So first thing first, we will set the, uh, yeah, we have already a solution class defined by lead code and max dot uh, product uh, method. So uh, with our function defined, let's dive into uh, first part. So mn will be len num1, len num2, uh, so to get started, uh, I'm capturing uh, the length of num1 and num2 as m and n respectively, and this will make our uh, loop and indexes much more uh, intuitive. Uh, and now uh, comes the interesting part. Instead of a full blown 2D array, I'm going to use uh, two one dimensional array. So current and uh, previous, and this will act as our dynamic programming table but in much more uh, space efficient uh, way. So initialize the current and previous row. So it will be current uh, float minus, minus infinity times uh, n plus one and previous will be also float minus infinity n plus one. Uh, so this array will keep track of the maximum dot product as we move through our input array. And the magic uh, of dynamic uh, programming is about to happen in our nested uh, loops. So for i in range one n plus one and for j in range i n plus one. So current per element dot product. So for every pair of elements from num1 and num2, uh, I will calculate the dot product. And this value is a candidate for our maximum uh, dot product. So it will be current product num1 times num2, uh, i n 
and J and update the DP value considering various cases. So uh, this is where the previous results come into play. Uh, so I'm updating a current array based on the value in the uh, previous uh, array and the current dot product and the other combination. So this dynamic approach uh, will help us in avoiding uh, recalculation and optimize our path to uh, the solution. So let's write it down. So current J will be max of current product and previous J current J minus one and current product max zero previous J minus one. And yeah. Then swap the current and previous row. I think I can yeah, make it bigger or yeah. So now we uh, see everything. So uh, lastly, uh, after uh, processing a row, uh, we need to swap current and previous row uh, array to move uh, to the next uh, iteration efficiently. So simple current previous and previous current and now return previous n. So uh, and voila with all uh, looping done our answer uh, reside in previous n which is the maximum dot product of the two uh, sequences. So let's wrap up uh, the coding. So this approach is uh, yeah, quite elegant and uh, the essence of uh, dynamic programming. So breaking down a complex program into simpler, smaller parts and building the solution uh, iteratively. Also uh, optimizing the space is uh, good advice. So let's run it to verify it's working so yeah, I'm running it and let's look at our previous case, 21 as expected, so all good. So uh, it's always crucial to test our solution for unseen test cases as well. So let's run our function uh, for unseen test cases as well. So I'm submitting it and let's see the results. Okay, so as you can see, our implementation beat 95 0.7% with respect to memory. So as I told you, it's memory optimized. And with respect to uh, runtime, it beat 85%, uh, 233 milliseconds. We can even uh, resubmit it to double check uh, yeah, its consistency. So yeah, now with respect to memory, it beating even 100% and still with runtime uh, around uh, mark of 243 to 45. So I think uh, my fastest run was uh, yeah even uh, 221 milliseconds, but or are uh, quite uh, in line. So probably a small difference uh, between run times. So, uh, okay. So uh, let's look uh, like it's working uh, perfectly. So really good. And there we have it, another problem tackled efficiently using dynamic programming. And it's always satisfying to see a solution come together uh, like this. So I hope you found this session helpful. And if you did, leave it a thumb up and drop uh, your thoughts or question in the comment uh, section below. Uh, so yeah, I uh, will be glad to hear from you and uh, share with video with your uh, friends and yeah if you want you can also uh, subscribe uh, for more coding uh, challenges tutorial machine learning uh, tech and uh, much more so uh, a lot uh, to come and yeah so most importantly keep practicing stay motivated happy coding and see you next time